welcome to A Homespun House. I'm Molly and thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day to join me today. Um, I look forward to it every week so I'm happy that you're all here again and I'm happy that new viewers uh, have decided to tune in. Um, we are kicking off our handcraft along. Uh, so I thought this uh, morning it would be fun to show you um, and every week, actually, while we're doing our handcraft along for these two months, I thought it would be really fun um, just to show you some of the random handcrafts that I have around my house. Um, so every week I'll show you, I don't know, three or so, because I have a lot. So the first one that I'll show is this hilarious one. I made it for Father's Day last year for Robert, and I made it true to size, which is really funny because um, it's a cross stitch and this is me right here in a dress that I always used to wear all the time with my little blue ballerina flats and then this is Robert with his jeans and gray t-shirt and then he's holding Elodie in the Moby. Um, and then underneath it says Familia Klatt in German um, because that's our name and that's how you say it in German. So he got that for Father's Day Okay, so I want to talk a teeny bit about this. Um, I, I designed it just totally randomly. It was really fun um, and super cute. It hangs in our kitchen. Um, I have a little wall with a couple of um, handmade things. It has a couple of photo strips because I collect photo strips um, just from a photo booth, black and white, funny ones, serious ones. Um, so there's a little wall with some photo strips. There is um, a hand-drawn picture that one of my best friends made. And there is a bunch of random things on this, on this little wall. And this is one of the things that hangs there. So this is Robert and me. And Robert is really tall. He's about six foot four and he's almost two meters. Um, and I am five, five and a half. So he's almost a foot taller than I am and I go up to just about his, just underneath of his shoulder. And so it actually looks like I'm a child here. I wish I would have made us both the same size. I think about making a new one now that Elodie isn't this small, <laughs> um, because I think it would be fun. But I'll keep this, I keep it and I hang it. But after I made it, I thought, oh my goodness, why did you make yourself so small? You look like Elodie. Um, and it's fun. You can personalize it to maybe one of your favorite outfits that you're wearing really often. I just thought that's a fun thing. A pretty quick project. Um, maybe something you guys want to do for the handcraft along. Uh, the next thing, this is also on the same wall, is um, I talked about this last week, these um, embroidery hoops that I have made a bit of. Um, I've given these away as gifts and I was really into doing them for maybe two months. Um, this is the only one that I kept and it says good morning beautiful and this is in my kitchen because it's just a nice thing to wake up to, to wake up and see that positive uh, sign. I also thought about putting it in the bathroom but I really like it in the bright kitchen because I'm in the kitchen way more often than I am in the bathroom. So it's just a pretty piece to see all the time. I designed this, um, just completely freehanded it and I really love it. Like I said, I would love to make some more of these with just uh, positive messages. And every, I've never made one that's the same. They've all been different, said different things with these pretty little flowers and um, this is the simplest of all of the ones that I've made. Um, most of them have a lot more flowers and maybe have some more writing or... But I really love this one. So this hangs on the same wall as my uh, Familia Klett um, cross stitch. And yeah. The next thing I wanted to show you is something that my grandma and grandpa made. Um, so I've mentioned before that my grandma and grandpa, um, my grandma Sue and my grandpa Neil, her husband, they, um, they used to do a lot of crafts together. Um, when my grandma owned and her friends owned a homespun house, um, their shop, which I've talked about I think in the first episode, um, 
she had a lot of things in there that she made and created and designed as well as my grandpa because he um, I guess you could call him a woodworker he is very very good at making things with his hands and um, they made a lot of projects together so my grandma would um, I think she would stencil out the design and then my grandpa would carve them so this is a design that she designed and my grandpa then cut out and sanded and finished the wood and then um, so it's a little kitten and she sits in my kitchen window as well so she gets a lot of sunlight and I see her every morning my kitchen is really bright it's covered in windows and it has a lot of pretty little trinkets on the window sills and a lot of flowers and she just brightens up my day she's kind of um, near the coffee machine and um, she has a little ribbon here which can be changed due to season um, I guess this is more of a Christmas ribbon but I really like it so so she's wearing it right now and then she has a sweet little heart so my grandma then painted them and then chose a ribbon and then drew a little sweet heart on the side they're so simple but they're so sweet as well. And my grandma made a lot of different things like this. A lot for different seasons. She maybe made ghosts or pumpkins or Christmas trees, um, kittens, of course. Anything you can imagine, they made it and carved it. And, and it's nice and flat at the bottom so she can just sit right on the windowsill. So I love her. My grandma gave her to me um, the last time that I visited she had two different kittens and I was able to choose one uh, That I liked so that's really sweet. It's, it's totally my grandma Sue So those are just some handmade things that I have around my house um, That I wanted to share with you So what have I been knitting this week? Um, I Have been of course knitting on my cozy memories blanket um, one that you guys have all seen almost every episode. So um, I knit four squares this week, or five squares this week. Um, I finished the purple one, and then I knit these four. I still have to sew these little pieces together, so I knit this one. This one here, which is that yarn that I, I want to know so bad what it is. She says that it's Koigu, I think. Um... I have no idea what colorway it is. What colorway is this, you guys? I want it, I need it. I really want to knit Eludia a shawl with it. I think it's so bright and colorful and I would love her to have a shawl in this colorway for next fall because I adore it. And then I knit um, this square and then last I knit this one. Um, I'm happy because I have a bit more uh, sock yarn to, to knit through for this week. I finished the all of the yarn from the package I received last week. Or no, not that I received last week. I finished all of the um, all of the yarn that had the nice little tags on it with little stories. The one that I was going to um, to read as I knit each square, and that's how I'm doing it now. Um, with the packages that I receive. I'm not reading what every yarn is before. I have been, um, I've been choosing my yarn and then looking for what, what the project was or what the story is behind it. Because that makes it really fun. Um, yeah, and I've been enjoying knitting on my Cozy Memories blanket. Uh, the next thing that I've been working on is, of course, I have it in a new project bag. It's not new, it's new to this project. This was knit, this was sewn by Sherilyn from the Fiber Pigeon Studios um, podcast. She gave it to me as a gift and I am knitting and almost finished with, I only knit I think maybe 10 rows on this in the last week but it's getting quite big as this is almost a 500 yard um, skein of, of wool with my my shawl. I'm knitting my shawl that I'm designing. So this is the Decadently Divine um, company and I'm knitting it in the squash blossom colorway. It's not on her website. I even went to go and have a look because I like the yarn so much that I thought about 
possibly ordering another skein um, just to have around because I really, really like it. And um, it's not on her website, but you can definitely custom order it, um, which is what I would do for those of you who are interested in it. And this project smells amazing. It's, I have my Tuft Wellens Vanilla Almond Soap in there. So in my project bags, oh my goodness, I have been looking everywhere for these. <laughs> I had lost some stitch markers from my Such Wonderful Stuff um, stitch markers, and they're right in here. Um, how funny. Yeah, anyway. Um, so in my project bags, I totally didn't plan talking about this today, but I can talk about it really quick. I obviously have my project, and then I always keep a soap now since I've had them from Tuft Woolens because I love the way they smell and I love the way they make my yarn and project smell. I always keep a crochet hook, um, one that goes with the yarn, one that coordinates with the yarn that I'm knitting, not in color, but obviously in size. I always keep a, um, a needle, a, bu a bunt needle. Bunt is what you call it in German. I think you call it bunt needle. Um, I always keep my labels from my yarn and then I always keep some stitch markers, whichever stitch markers I'm using um, or even if I'm not using any, I always keep a package of, of stitch markers in there because um, I always want to have some if I need some. And then I'm always keeping some chapstick in all of, I have this in every project bag, different chapsticks, different. Um, so here I have a Lippenpflege Calendula one. Um, I got this from Robert's mom, it's really nice. It's a naturally made one, um, made here in Berlin actually. Uh, and then I have, I don't have it in, in any of these, which is strange. I usually, in a couple of them, I have some hand cream because I've talked about how my hands are always getting really dry in the summer as well because it's warming up here. So um, that's what I usually keep in my project bag. I'm curious what sort of extra things you keep in yours that I maybe don't have in mine. Um, and then I'll keep the pattern if I need the pattern in there, if the pattern fits. So I finally decided, um, thank you so much to Coddington. Um, I finally decided what I'm going to cast on because I had been, um, I had had such a problem with, with not knowing what to cast on and wanting to cast everything on but not being inspired by anything. So she posted, um, I don't know, a, a little list of patterns that she really loved, which was ridiculous because I loved every single one. Your taste is amazing. Um, I need to go ahead and look at all of your favorites and everything you have in your queue because the options that you that you suggested to me were just lovely. So I ended up choosing the Fleur Blue pattern and this is by Christella Niol. Um, and my printer uh, made the picture have some lines in it, but I hope that you can still see it. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. So this is the back detail. I'm knitting it for Elodie. Uh, she's only two years old, but because her dad, my husband, is uh, quite large, she's pretty tall as well. So um, I'm knitting the four-year-old size. So that is the picture of the back. Here is um, kind of a picture of the front. I'll show you another one in in just a minute. So let's see if we can get a better picture. I'm almost positive there is one in here. So here it is. It's kind of small, but it's it's beautiful. So this is the front. It has this really pretty lace detail down the sides and then the three buttons at the top. I might button it all the way down. Um, and then you can choose your sleeve length. There is this, um, 
your elbow sleeve or you could do quarter length or full sleeves. I'm quite sure I'll do a full sleeve. But I just love this um, this beautiful lace down the down the center and then here how it gathers and um, here how it's kind of ruffly. I think it's really, really sweet and I think it's going to look beautiful on Elodie. Um, I think it's just a gorgeous piece. So the yarn that I chose, oh, something else that I also keep in my project bag, some of them, if it need be, is a um, tape measure. Okay, moving on. Um, I have chosen um, the Artist Palette yarn, their Smoothie Sock Base, and her Verdigness colorway, or Verdigris, um, like I said, it's a little, it's kind of written a teeny bit, um, it's hard to read because it's handwritten on there. So this is 75% uh, wool and 25% nylon. It's hand painted in Worcestershire, England. So this is from Artist Palette. This yarn is gorgeous and will look so lovely on Elodie because she has these brilliantly bright blue eyes like Robert and this color is just going to look stunning. So it starts at the top down and um, it's on fingering weight yarn. So it's quite finely knit on a 3.5 millimeter needle. And I, well, let me show you my yarn. I don't even think that I've shown it to you. So, so here it is. It's such a pretty, pretty blue. And I really love um, the fabric that it's knitting up into. It's soft, but it's not so soft that I feel like it's too fragile for a little girl. Um, it's definitely fragile and um, really delicate, but it's still, I think, I think a very wearable piece. Um, so here it is from the neck down. This is the back, the lace panel. Um, that I'm working on and I've already it's a it's really really neatly constructed I've never knit a cardigan um, constructed this way I don't want to talk about it too much or give away too much detail because um, it's a paid-for pattern which I purchased and um, you can go ahead and look at it or purchase a pattern she has I've, I've never seen a uh, Cristela Noel. Yeah, or Crystal Noel. I don't know how you pronounce her name. Um, I've never seen patterns from her, but I'm so happy that I found her through uh, Ravelry because I can definitely see casting on and purchasing more of her patterns because they're really, for the most part, nicely written. Some things are a little bit... I've already come across two different um, rows where I had to scratch my head, my head a little bit and think um, what she meant, but uh, they're quite self-explanatory and really nicely written, um, wonderfully and beautifully designed. I'm very impressed so far. Um, now I'm, I'm knitting the sleeves here. I've just knit this part of the... Of the um, of the neck, I guess you could call it, or a decollete, and now I'm starting to do here the cape of the of the sleeve, and it's just I can tell it's going to be a really nicely fitted cardigan, and I've really enjoyed knitting it. Um, there's enough change in it, like here the, with the lace panel, that it keeps it interesting, and um, it's a six row repeat. I guess, yeah, which which I have memorized already, which makes it easy enough, but then um, every every row, it's almost, some. it is something new because you have this um, lace repeat, and it's just fun. I'm, ha I'm, ha I'm having a lot of fun knitting on it. I've never knit a child's um, fingering weight cardigan because it's fine, but I, as you all know, I'm mostly using fingering weight yarn, and I have a bit of fingering weight yarn that I want to knit with because I adore it so much and I like the finer um, knitted garments. 
so I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm so happy that I found this pattern. Thank you so much for recommending it to me. I, I think it's stunning and um, I don't know why more people haven't knit this pattern and why more of her patterns aren't that popular. Um, probably because there are a lot of designers out there. But for those of you, she also designs adult things for adults. So go and take a look at her patterns because they're really pretty, they're really nicely designed and um, I adore this one. I'm using my, again, such wonderful stuff. I think she makes my favorite um, stitch markers. There was a while when I was really into these um, uh, fancy jewelry type stitch markers and I do like those, I do like those. But I really like just the, the circle or um, star shaped or um, I like the stitch markers that don't really have anything dangling from them. I think those are fun from time to time, but I prefer just the kind of standard stitch markers. But I'm using her, her star ones and they're really cool. I've used them before. I used them on my Cozy Memories when I first received my stitch markers from such wonderful stuff. Um, she's on Etsy, and um, I'm using three, six, I'm using six of them on this project, and I'm enjoying them. I'm not having a problem with the shape of the star. It's not bothering me. Um, it's working out totally fine, and they're super cute. They are little jewelry pieces kind of on my knitting. Uh, yeah, so I am really enjoying this project, and let's not forget to mention, actually, because I almost forgot. Um, the buttons that I'm going to use on this. So um, I am going to be using these adorable bunny buttons from Fascination Studio. These are handmade, completely handmade, hand painted by her. And I think they're really pretty. So let me show you how they look with the yarn because that's important. So here they are. I think the colors go really nicely and really sweetly together. All right. So that's fun. I'm I'm so happy to. Uh, while I really love my projects, while I really love working on the shawl, while I obviously always love coming back to my cozy memories blanket, it's. Um, it's really nice to have kind of a newer project to be working on. Uh, I love it. I love this project. And I definitely will be going back to that list and looking for some more <laughs> um, cardigans and things to, to be casting on. I'm also just looking out for patterns for myself. A lot of you recommended uh, children's cardigans and children's sweaters, but I'm really open to suggestions for things for me. If you see anything that just screams Molly, send it my way, send it in the thread, anything. Um, let's see. I have been doing a little bit more spinning. Um, I'm still working on my rock and string creation uh, fiber. This is the pencil roving. It is 70% alpaca. 30% um, merino, I believe. Oh goodness, I wish I could remember. Let's see if I wrote it down. I did. Yep, it's 70% alpaca, 30% merino. So much fun to spin. I've spun a fourth of it now. So here it is. Um, I showed it to you last week, but it's obviously, there's more on the bobbin than last time. Um, and it's fun to spin. Like I said, the pencil roving is, it's so easy, it's so fast. It's, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's my favorite fiber prep. Um, really nice, really enjoyable, very soft. And it's really strange because my hands are normally, like I've mentioned, really dry and very, very cold. But I've noticed that my hands are getting a bit sweaty, which is really strange um, when I'm spinning this. Maybe it's the alpaca. I've never spun with alpaca before. Um, I don't know. 
have you guys ever experienced this for those of you who don't normally have sweaty hands uh, that your hands are sweating when you're spinning alpaca so I get up every once in a while and just wash my hands and dry them off um, while I'm spinning that and it seems to do the trick um, we are doing our handcraft along this week like I mentioned in the beginning and I I, I had mentioned to you guys that I'm doing this tea time um, sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, there was a time when I was doing a lot of cross stitch and I have so many cross stitch projects, uh, work in progress, so many works in progress, that I decided to pick one up this week that was almost finished and finish it. So here it is, um, kind of goes with the tea time theme. Um, it says tea time, it's this pretty little shabby chic uh, teacup and I will probably put it in a um, embroidery hoop and hang it on my little wall uh, in the kitchen, I think. But we'll see, it could go somewhere else. Maybe I'll start a new wall. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really cute. I hope it shows up well on the camera. So there is that one. And then, because I was finishing that one, I printed out and got all ready my um, tea time one. I have it in my Knit Pro uh, pattern keeper, which I absolutely adore. It just sits up on your table while, while you're working on a cross stitch, a knitting pattern, lace chart. It's fantastic. This is called Knitter's Pride in America for those of you who are interested because I know a lot of Americans um, have thought that I meant knit picks, but it's actually Knitter's Knitter Pro in or Knit Pro in, in Europe, but it's Knitter's Pride in America. So if you're interested in that, that is what it is. So I wanted to start this um, earlier, but I found my um, cross stitch fabric and I always dye my cross stitch fabric. I never um, use white, white fabric. So I really wanted to, to, to start this, but then I, I realized that I hadn't dyed any fabric. So um, I'm always dyeing mine with bags of tea so I get, um, I don't even boil the water. I just get some warm, the warmest water that I can get from my sink and put maybe five bags of tea in the water for five minutes, just a little bit of water. And then I set the bags um, on the, the fabric and I kind of push them in and splash a little of water, bit of water on the fabric. And then you get this sort of a look. And I really like it. It looks really nice when it's framed. Um. Both of these have been dyed in tea, but this one has more of a splattered look because it's really what I wanted. So um, this just dried uh, this morning and um, I wanted to have a little bit of it done, so I worked on four rows of it. Uh, it doesn't look impressive at all. You probably don't even know what it is, but um, there it is, <laughs> just to let you know that I've um, begun it and I think um, it won't be as large as I thought now that I'm seeing it so I will I will definitely frame it in a hoop because I love my cross stitches framed in a hoop um, Amanda from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery the picture that I showed you she has hers framed and it looks really nice framed um, but I think I'll use a hoop I am excited to see how it progresses and I'm looking forward to to working on it and to I'm, I'm changing the colors in it a little bit um, but that's normal for me in a pattern I, I never use the exact colors that um, that are shown um, I usually go go mostly off of off of it but I'm never saying okay what's this color number what's this color number never um, so it's fun I'm having a lot of fun getting back into um, cross stitch it, it's actually hard for me though 
I really am having a hard time now that I've been so just drenched in, in knitting. Uh, it's all that's been on my mind lately, craft-wise. Uh, it's all that I've been doing. Um, so it's, it is a little bit hard to, to make myself sit down and cross-stitch, and especially counted cross-stitch. Um, like I said, it was something that I so, so, so loved, but I need to get into a rhythm of it again because I'm having a hard time seeing the meditation in it because I'm too busy counting uh, everything that I'm putting in each row. So I, th I think it will come. I think it will slowly come. I've only done four rows on this and... I just need to sit and relax and get used to it again because it's been a couple of months. I really, really, really would love to finish, um, I would love to bind and quilt this quilt behind me because I think this is one that I have had finished, um, the patchwork on it, finished for, this is the Scrappy Trip Along quilt. It was really popular, I think, a year ago, a year and a half ago, maybe could even be two years ago how, that, how long that this has been finished I bet it's been about a year and a half two years ago I would love to finish this my main two goals for um, this uh, craft along or hand craft along which are going along two months um, are to have this quilt at least um, quilted because you do the binding last. So I would love to at least have it quilted and to have um, my cross stitch finished. And I would love um, to get a little bit of sewing done. What, I don't know, possibly some sort of garment would be really fun. I have two months, so it's a bit of time. And I think those three goals are quite doable. Um, yeah. I hope that I can get into it though. That's my biggest worry, is that my mind will just want to knit too much. Um, and I'm definitely open to knitting, of course. I'm definitely going to be knitting, but um, I really want to start getting back into handcrafts other than knitting. So for me, that's really important, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this handcraft along, because I had been abandoning all of those handcrafts that I love. And I know a lot of you as well have said that you are so happy and so appreciative for this handcraft along because you as well had been abandoning them and have so many um, lingering works in progress that ne needed to be worked on and needed some love and needed some attention being paid to them. So I wish myself lots of luck. I wish you guys lots of luck. I hope that um, you can re-fall in love with those crafts that you have left behind. Um, we have some really fun prizes for this month's, for this and next month's craft along. So I have two prizes. The first one I'm kind of calling um, winter relaxation prize. So the first prize is um, this amazingly beautiful hand spun art yarn from Weird and Twisted. This is a uh, German um, woman, two women actually, who are working together. And this is the Dancing Snowflake colorway. It's completely hand spun and it has these beautiful art pieces in them. So it has these pretty um, beads and I hope you can see it. I hope it will show up on the camera. And then these really pretty snowflakes. And they are everywhere in the yarn. Um, nicely placed though. It's not too... It's not everywhere that it's just kind of a bit ridiculous looking. It's really pretty and really delicate and stunning. And then she's plied it with this sparkle yarn. So it's 153 meters or 167 yards. It's about a worsted weight, I would say. 
but it's kind of um, uneven. It's an art yarn, so so many pretty things you could knit with this. Um, there's a lot to each prize. So then um, this person will also get the vanilla almond wool wash from Tuft Woolens. You will get these beautiful stitch markers from the Caffeinated Sheep. And here they are. They're amber. And there are four of these. You will get these adorable tea cup um, earrings from the Handmade Hippo on Etsy. Aren't these so cute? They're like little buttons covered in fabric. And they have these backs that I really like, just the little um, kind of rubber backs. So this is all just kind of relaxing with the teacups and the vanilla soap and the amber um, and the amber stitch markers. You will get um, a little sock knitting book. I think it has, let's see how many different patterns are inside. Oh, I don't know, it doesn't say. And then you will get um, from Cottage Creations, you will get, this is Carol Anderson, you will get her as Baker's Dozen of Warm Scarves. So there are 12 different scarf patterns in here all completely different and um, Carol Anderson is local to me when I lived in Wisconsin and I actually knew her granddaughter so um, this one is signed and it says have more knitting fun Carol Anderson and she gave this to me um, May 16th 2008 so that's prize number one how fun is that um, the next prize is my summer themed prize. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to mention, Weird and Twisted, um, she has a coupon code for you. It's Molly and it is, or no, it's not Molly, I'm sorry. It is Homespun and you get 10% off uh, through July 31st. Okay, so the next prize is um, my summer inspired yarn like I said so um, here I'm kind of thinking more camping and campfire so it's it's summer camping um, is the theme of this one so you get this amazing uh, smudge yarns and she's from Ireland and I think she's really special because she really um, the woman who dyes these yarns she really values local wools and so this is a yarn that is local to Ireland and this is BFL Superwash, 70% and then 30% nylon. This is a sock weight and it is Cinnabar is the color weight. It's such a beautiful fire, um, campfire orange. Very, very pretty really nice and soft. I love BFL. I've never knit with BFL. I have a skein of this. I have no idea what it will become, but it's it's really pretty, I think. So here it is. And you will get these sweet little um, bee earrings from The Handmade Hippo on Etsy. She has so many different earrings and she has little lanyard clips and really, really sweet, very affordable. I'm telling you, really affordable. I think a pair of these earrings is like two euro 45 for one pair. Um, they're really cute. I have a pair, which I wish I was wearing today. Um, I'll show you guys next episode. They're really pretty with little flowers on them. The same sort of button style with um, fabric over them. Everything in her shop is, is like that. So then you get this um, Refresh um, wool wash. 
I just thought refresh would go good with the campfire um, theme because you you kind of want when you're so warm and sticky it's nice to have just a little refreshment to cool you down in the hot summer heat you get these stitch markers which are the same ones that I'm using on my um, Fleur Blue cardigan that I'm knitting for Elodie so you're getting the star stitch markers because you go stargazing of course in the evening when you're camping and here they are from such wonderful stuff so these are the stitch markers and they come in of course for cute little tins and you also get um, the sock knitting book and then you get a um, pattern as well unsigned from Carol Anderson Cottage Creations and this is Little Lily's Sweater this is a pattern that I think I've maybe knit three times um, and I really like it it's it's nice because it's kind of an oversized sweater but it's one that if you like that sort of more tr I, th I think it's kind of a trendy looking sweater depending upon how you style it but um, if you like that it's one that the Elodi has one that she's worn oh my goodness I would say from the time she was six months to now um, now when she was born the sleeves were up to her wrists and now they're about up to here but it's still a little bit oversized that it looks really cool when she's wearing it with um, a long sleeve shirt underneath of it so it's just kind of a nice I use it as a layering piece now um, I guess I should have talked about this when I talked about my um, um, the knit alongs but we, we had our, our sock knit along last month and that ended after the last episode so um, now is the time that I guess I can share with you the, the winners of, um, of the sock knit along. So the winners are, let's see, Deep Blue Renegade. So, so she gets the fiber from Rock and String Creation. It is 100% Falkland wool. I hope you enjoy spinning with this. Um, you also get the handmade purple buttons from Fascination Studio, which are really sweet. These are This is the same person who made the bunny mutt buttons that I am using for Elodie's cardigan. And then you get um, the wool wash from Tuft Woolens, which is just absolutely fabulous. You all know I love these. So congratulations. The next winner is Coddington. How funny is that? How awesome is that? Um, and you win the Rock and String Creation yarn in the Serendipity um, colorway. Beautiful, so pretty. She still has her coupon code going. It's Molly, M-O-L-L-Y, and you get 15% off, um, I believe when you spend $25 or more. And then you get these pretty pink buttons from Fascination Studio. And then you get your Royal Alpieri wool wash from Tuft Woolens. So thank you so much to um, Tuft Woolens, Fascination Studio, and Rock and String Creation for donating those three prizes. So, so generous and so wonderful of you. And, um, I know that the people who receive those gifts will completely adore and love them. And thank you so much to all of you for participating. We had, um, let's see, I think we had about 160 entries, which is just amazing. So wonderful, so happy. I'm so happy that so many of you participated. We had a lot of chatter going on for the sock knit along in the Ravelry thread, which I was really, really happy to see. It was so fun to see so many people involved and so many of you are so funny. So many of you had me just laughing and squealing and giggling out loud because of the ridiculous things that you were saying and talking about. And 
just fun to read the, the chatter and the thread and get to know you guys a little bit more through all of my, my knit-alongs. One of the threads that I completely forgot to talk about that I really wanted to talk about is um, last week I talked about wanting to do some mini skein swaps for, the cozy, for our cozy memories blankets or just for any fun things that, um, that we're doing. So Nina um, decided that she wanted to host kind of a mini skein swap. So um, it's quite small this first time around. I think there will be about 10 to 15 people interested, 10 to 15 people participating in it. I think we already have the people participating. If you're interested and you haven't um, written Nina, there's a thread on, on Ravelry that you can see for the, for the yarn swap round one just write her and read the thread. Anyway, so what it is, is there are 10 to 15 people and um, one person starts off, Nina, and she has about 20 mini skeins of yarn, so about six grams of yarn. And she puts them all into a box with maybe a couple of very, very small um, things, just fun little random things that she's going to send to the next person on the list. So let's say I'm the next person on the list. I will get tw 20 skeins from Nina and then maybe a small little treat from her for me. And I get to pick out of those 20 skeins any skeins that I want. So let's say of those 20 skeins, seven appeal to me. I take seven of those mini skeins and replace them with seven of my own skeins. And I get seven new skeins, I replace it with seven skeins, and then I mail it off to the next person down on the list with a little treat for them. And that's how it goes. So it just kind of goes around in a circle and finally Nina will get it in the end. I think that's so exciting. Um, I'm really excited. I think I'm maybe sixth on the list. I don't know, somewhere in the middle. And I'm participating. I think it will be really fun. Um, I'm excited to get more um, yarns for my Cozy Memories blanket. You can attach stories if you want to the mini skeins that you're sending. You can do it however you want. So um, that's really exciting, something to look forward to. And I just realized that I have a couple of more things to talk about that I will wait to talk about until next week because I don't just want to throw them in at the end of the podcast episode. Um, I have a lot of stuff to do today, which I'm excited about. I have some grocery shopping. I'm going to clean a little bit. Um, I'll do some knitting, some crafting, uh, just fun stuff. It's all really fun stuff that I get to do today. Nothing, um, nothing stressful, but then again, I guess I don't really have anything. I don't, I don't really ever have to do anything stressful, which I'm happy for. So uh, I guess that brings our podcast to a close. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that you guys are working on some, some fun handcrafts. I hope you're knitting, if that's what you want to do. If you're not knitting, I hope you have some, I hope you were inspired maybe by some of the things that I've sh I showed you that weren't knitting related. I'm really looking forward to seeing everything that all of you are working on. Um, I haven't really seen, you haven't shared a lot of your pictures yet. And that's something that I'm looking forward to and really want to see. Just create um, a project page in Ravelry, Handcrafts, title the project, and put it under, um, I completely improvised this design. And share them with us. I really, really want to see what you guys are working on, what sort of handcrafts are inspiring you. And um, I look forward to seeing that and to having more progress on mine next week. So I'll see you soon. <laughs>